Things I've done years ago, I still perform today. I am still the same God who was and is and is to come. I am here for you, and I love you. And I continue to remind you of how much I love you and the great things I have for you in your life. If you will worship me, you have got to break off the heavy bands. 
You have got to let go of the bondages and the things in your life that I am here to ready to take upon myself. I am here to free you today. I am here to set you free, to be your salvation today. I am here to be your deliverer today. I have told you before and I'm telling you again, I am here. If you will let the chains be broken and break free, I want you to worship me. I want to see your outward appearance of my love and the love that you have for me today. I want you to worship me with a sacrifice of praise. I want you to worship me with a grateful heart because I have done above and beyond great things for you. Now show me my praise that I am deserving of. Show me my praise and you will see even greater He wants to do great things today in your life. Just because he loves you. He loves you. No other person has ever given their life for you but Christ. And no other person ever will but Christ. And he would do it all again just for you. Just for you. That's how much he loves you today. You may be feeling unloved and unwanted, but there's an almighty God in heaven that's still alive today and sits on his throne and he loves you. He's interrupted this service for you today. Now he's asking you to do the same, to yield to him, to yield to him, to give it all to him. Once you come into the presence of an almighty God, your life is forever changed and you'll never be the same. Never be the same. Hallelujah. These altars are always open.
mentioned a couple of weeks ago what a tragedy it would be to be in the presence of God and miss it. Yes. The atmosphere is right. There's healing. There's freedom. There's power over sin. Because there is no sin that the cross cannot cover. You might think that you're too far gone, but you are not. God's grace can meet you right where you are right now. You might have turned your back on him, but he is here now to welcome you. You are not too far gone. Don't let anybody tell you that. Don't let the enemy tell you that. He loves you right where you are. His presence is here. In the Old Testament, Moses wouldn't go forward without God's presence. That's how we should be. We don't want to go forward without his presence in our lives because that's what we need. That's what we need for change. That's what we need for freedom. That's what we need to overcome. That's what we need to be victorious. We need his presence in our life. We don't want to miss it, church. I just beseech you to open your heart and be obedient. If he is speaking to you today, don't let this moment pass you by. Your life could be in the balance. This is not the time to wait or delay. I know I'm taking a moment, but it's just on my heart. I feel like there's somebody here that needs to hear this. You are not too far gone. Know that he loves you. Know his presence is spoken to you here today. Whatever it is that you're walking through, he meets you right there. Keep praying, he'll keep proving. Keep worshiping and he'll keep working. He has all that we need. He is the only source of hope, the giver of life and salvation. And he is so good to us, so merciful and so faithful. And he will never leave you or forsake you. Let's just continue our worship this morning as we go on with the remainder of the service. Let's remember these names. Ira and Randy Roberts, Kathy Hazlip, Frank Roberts, the family of David Kimbrough, and the Jana Broom family. And if you have a need in your life, would you just raise your hand? Just acknowledge it before the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord, even when we are so unworthy, when we were still sinners, you died for us. God, your goodness will keep running after us. We have so much worth assigned to our lives because of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. And I don't care what the enemy might be saying to someone here today. You thought we were worth it. We could never praise you enough. We could never thank you enough. You were so good to us, Lord. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you didn't leave us, God, that you kept pursuing us, that you always will come after us, Lord, no matter how far we try to run away from you. You won't let us go. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your presence this morning that reminds us that you'll meet us where we are. Thank you for what we felt and what we've experienced this morning. And I pray that that just continues as we study the Word of God. I pray for every single name on the list. I pray for everybody that's sitting in this building today. Lord, find our hearts open and receptive. Posture us to receive your Word. Lord, we want to learn. We want to glean from you, God, so please just open up our heart, open up our eyes, Lord, to see. Lord, we love you and we thank you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. God is 
I'm not asking today for your affirmation as much as I am asking for your recognition. Do you feel him in this place like I feel? Yes. I, I just can't move from here. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Because in the last few weeks, I've, I've told you and it's been mentioned again from this pulpit that there's a spirit of deliverance in this place today. And I just pray today in these next few moments, stay with me. I'm, I'm not going to preach. Spirit of the living God is in this place to do some detriment. And he's going to do some detriment to the devil's kingdom. I teach in ministerial development and have for years. And in training pastors, we need to be authentic. But there's a degree of transparency that we could use and should use, but you have to be cautious. Everybody don't want to hear my problems. But I think sometimes we assimilate to each other because we look at people, and I'm not just talking about pastors, but we look at people in the congregation that seem to have it all together, and they don't. Now, what I'm about to say, I pray Psalms 19:14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my rock, my redeemer. But today, there's some people in this place today, and you need to be free. There may be people today that you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to be free. But there may be Christians in this house today that the enemy has lied to you. And he will. And as wise as we may be to the tactics, sometimes we fall into that place. I'm just going to tell you something. I'm going to share this. And I'm going to share it briefly. But in 2010, May the 5th, Megan came into our lives. Two months after that was the darkest period of my life. I've got a new daughter. I've got a thriving church, and my wife knows exactly what I'm about to say. But I sunk into a pit of depression. I'm just going to be honest with you. Is that all right? 
I'd come to church. I'd preach. God would intervene. And I'd go home and I'd sit in the bed. I'd turn out all the lights. My wife would take care of my daughter. I'd get up the next morning. I'd do what I have to do. And at 4.30 when she'd come in, we'd eat dinner. I'd go back to the bedroom and I'd stay there. And if I'm just transparent with you, you can fool church people because they're too busy to know. Because if the devil can keep you busy, he can keep you occupied. Yeah. All but two people. And there was one gentleman who, in our congregation, unbeknown to me at the time, came to Angela and he said, I don't know what's going on, but something's not right. You can fool some of the people, but you can't fool all the people. Because, see, I, I, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to stand up and you have those bursts of moments where you feel good. And then you go home. And it's just a world of darkness. Not because of anything you've done, but because the enemy cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I want you to listen to me today. I know this is uncomfortable. Bow your head, crawling under the pew, walk out if you have to, but I'm going to tell you the truth. We need to be authentic with the God that we know. And we need to realize that we can't do it ourselves. You say, what happened? I remember one night, a few weeks later, when the Spirit of God came in that room and when He touched my heart and my life and I leaned down over that bed and I said, God, I can't fool people and I know I can't fool you, but I'm asking you right now, if you've called me, I ask you to equip me. And if you equip me, God, I pray that you give me the strength to live day to day. There was no reason to be depressed. There was no reason to be down. There was no reason to be upset. But the enemy likes to put us in a prison. And if he can put us in a prison, he can bind our effectiveness. You say, well, pastor, why would you admit that in the house of God? Because somebody needs to hear me today. Jesus Christ is alive and well. He... He has stopped everything at this moment and brought me here after 2010 to tell you that he's a deliverer, he's a keeper, he's a mind regulator, he's a heart fixer, he'll put your emotions back in order. The devil is a liar. All you've got to do is lean on him and trust in him. You don't have to have a confidant. You don't have to have a therapist. Jesus Christ is still the Prince of Peace. Come on, all over this house. If you can stand to your feet right now, stand to your feet. The Spirit of the living God is in this place. I want you to lift your hands. It's already been said. The atmosphere is right. God is about to do something more in this place. Father, speak to your people. Go ahead. Oh, Father, you're so good. You're so good. There's some people right now that you don't need to walk. You need to run. You say, well, why can't he just touch me at my pew? He can touch you at your pew. But you've tried it, and you've tried it, and you've tried it, and then you get in the parking lot, and it's the same old thing week after week, day after day. And right now, you need to make a step of faith out from where you're at and say, God, I'm trusting you. Lord, I'm believing in you. Come on. Somebody right now needs to believe and needs to trust God. I'm asking you right now. Oh, God, have your way. Be glorified. 
Oh, he'll set you free. Come on, come on. Hey, it wouldn't be a bad idea if you just clear out of the pews and come. If you don't want to come on your own, bring somebody with you. Ah, hallelujah. We're going to lay hands on one another. We're going to believe in faith. We're going to trust God. There is breakthrough in this house. We are not leaving here like we came in Jesus' name. There is breakthrough in this place. Oh, God be glorified. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead, play it. God is so good. God is so good. Father, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Come on, church. All that will, come, come, come. There's strength in numbers. Come.
Somebody just lift your hands all over this house. Come on. Let's just worship. The spirit of the living God is in this place today. He hadn't lifted his spirit. He's here. Oh, Father, touch us. Touch us, Lord. Touch us. Touch us. Lord, be glorified. God is so good. He's so good to me. Oh, I, I love him so. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, I love him so. I love him so. Oh, I. Love him so, he's so good to me. He answers prayer. <laughs> he's done it today. He answers prayer he answers prayer he's so good to me mm. oh.
Hallelujah. Come on, just praise him in this house. You just worship him today. Lord, we love you. Listen, listen, listen. I, I don't know about you. I know that it's almost two minutes to 12. But, but I, I, I realize, I, I don't know, this moment feels too good just to let it pass. Everybody didn't grow up like I grew up in the Pentecostal church, but I remember when we'd stick around and we would tarry till something happened. I don't mean just something happened, but until God manifested himself in some way in the congregation. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I said that to say this. I, I really, it feels too good just to let this moment pass. I know, I've been transparent with you this morning because we've all went through times in life where we haven't felt very well. But I feel good in this house this morning. And, and, and here's the thing. It's more than just the feeling. What I mean by the feeling, it's more than just feeling good in body. It's more than just feeling good in mind. I feel whole in spirit today. You understand what I'm saying? See, here's what I mean by whole in spirit. I believe right now I could swing out over hell on a wet noodle with a water gun and say, boo, it's the devil. Because victory in Jesus is not just a song I sing. Victory in Jesus is something that I possess today. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I'm going to ask you today, you were in this place this morning. Maybe you came in one mood or with one issue or with one problem. But how many would say today at this moment that the Lord has met you here and you're in a much different state than when you came in this building? Come on. Can somebody testify this morning? Come on. Let's worship Victory. him. Let's honor him today. He's worthy. And He's worthy. Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the master. Hey. because we can. Well, while I was praying, somebody touched me while I was praying. Somebody touched me while I was praying. Somebody touched me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Oh, glory, 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 glory.
began to pray for the Lord to have his way. The glory of the Lord is coming down. It's coming down, down, down. It's coming down, down, down. The glory of the Lord is coming down. Oh, when the saints began to pray for the Lord to have his way. The glory of the Lord is coming down. One more time. It's coming down. The glory of the Lord is coming down. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Sing it. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. One last time. Oh, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Come on, somebody lift your hands all over this house. Let's just worship him. He's in this house. He's in this place. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, look. I'm not trying to keep you here, but it just feels too good to leave. Hey, amen. Hey, amen. Hey. Hey. I feel like singing. feel like rejoicing. feel like honoring the one who's the reason for the rejoicing. Amen. Come on, somebody praise him in this house. Just begin to honor him. Just begin to thank him. Just begin to praise Him. Lift your voice and praise. Clap your hands unto Him. Thank Him for what He's done. He set you free. He set your mind free. He spoke to your spirit today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His name, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my. 
sing it one more time. You sing it. Lift your voice. Would you do this with me? If you're not standing, would you just stand? I, I'm not going to keep you. You can stay as long as you like, but I want us to do something before any of us leave this place at this moment. Would you take the hand of the person next to you or make a point of contact with them? It may be your spouse. It may be someone. I want us to pray one for another before we leave this place. I want us to bless one another because there have been some needs met in this house this morning. Uh, there's been a turning point for some lives in this place today. Oh, listen, friend. The Spirit of the living God is in this place. And he's been here. Come on, just begin to bless him. Father, right now, Lord, touch your people. Move, Lord Jesus, upon them. Lord, I pray your blessing.